when people like me say, gatekeep your hobbies, we don't say it to be me. We don't say it out of some kind of desperate, misplaced entitlement, thinking that we're the only ones who can possibly enjoy a hobby or enjoy an IP or enjoy anything at all, and that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, if you're not one of us, you don't get to enjoy it. But we say that not to deliberately exclude people, but to deliberately exclude, not to, not, I should say this, not to deliberately exclude everybody, but to deliberately exclude those who want to fundamentally change everything that we love. And there's no greater example of why you need to gatekeep your hobbies more than Wizards of the Coast. If you want a more perfect example of why you keep, why you keep depressed, vapid narcissists who simply want to destroy your hobby out of your hobby, look no further than anything that Wizards of the Coast has ever, has ever touched. I'm talking Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. Now remember, this is the same company that sick to the Pinkerton Detective Agency on a poor hapless YouTuber who accidentally showed a preview of a card he was not supposed to, he was not supposed to show. It was a complete accident, and they sent private investigators with a very shaky history after him. And this also this from the same company who decided to rewrite their rule book to exclude mentions of slavery and race in Dungeons and Dragons. Now in case you don't remember how Dungeons and Dragons is played I can play however the hell I want. I can set up whatever campaign I damn well please, and you can't do a thing about it. And you shouldn't do a thing about it because the whole game is built around me being able to play however I want. But because Wizards of the Coast is not controlled by people who love money and love the fans, they're controlled by people who, want, who hate the fans. But they still love money, so they still make <clears throat> really stupid decisions and try to adapt previous IPs, but with a little bit of a photo-negative spin. Well, welcome back to Normie Nerdom, everybody. I'm Red Strider, and today we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering. Now, I'm not a Magic the Gathering player. I'm really not. I enjoy the artwork, certainly. I, I have a huge stack of, of, uh, of old cards back at home I probably should sell because I don't, I don't use them. But the artwork is really interesting. I, I managed to play a couple sessions. The, the gameplay was pretty fun. I just couldn't really get into it because I know, because it's a living card game, but one of those things I'm going to have to buy pack after pack after pack in order to play competitively. I just wasn't into that. But Magic the Gathering recently announced some kind of Elseworlds crossover with Lord of the Rings, with J.R.R. Tolkien's universe. <sighs> Now, we already got a little glimpse of, glimpse of this, I think, last year, where they showed a card featuring Aragorn, I believe, fighting at Minas Tirith. Well, we thought it was Aragorn. The card said it was Aragorn, but looking at the artwork, it definitely was not Aragorn, because Aragorn was depicted as a black man. Now, here's the thing. Aragorn is described in detail in Chapter 9 of Fellowship of the Ring. Shaggy black hair, pale face, pale skin, and gray eyes. I'm sorry, Tolkien, it's not me calling out your crap, it's Tolkien himself, because Tolkien, again, wrote Aragorn as a white man. Now here's the uncomfortable fact. Tolkien wrote all of the Lord of the Rings, with a white European perspective in mind. And here's the thing, to all of you racists who say, that, oh, that's problematic, screw you, it's fine. Just like it's completely okay to have African mythology and depict African heroes, or no, but oh no, wait, you won't, because all you can do is co-opt other Western culture because you don't see, legitim you don't see legitimacy in black heroes and black stories. Sorry, that's your fault, not mine. So already we thought that it was it was bad enough, but then they release more, and there's some, there's some leaks that have been that have been presented. And I 100% believe this is true, depicting a black Galadriel and a black Eowyn. The black Galadriel looks like Storm. Black Eowyn still has blonde braided hair. Here's the thing about the Rohirrim: they're based off. There could not be a more there could not be a more European inspired race. Than in, in Tolkien, than the Rohirrim, the race of men with lo with blonde hair, with straw, with the hair the color of straw, riding horses, their shields and spears. They could not be 
more inspired by by Danish legend, by Vikings, by even some mixture of Celts in there. Tolkien had a very specific vision in mind when he wrote The Lord of the Rings. And I'm sorry you don't like it because it doesn't fe because it doesn't feature enough black people for you. But you're an idiot if that's how if that's your main problem with the story. Let's be very clear, y'all. Tolkien was a very well-traveled man, very well-read man. He developed the Lord of the Rings as a mythology for Saxony, England. Now, in case you didn't know anything about English history, for for a very long time, the, the Saxons inhabited England. Now, of course, there's a lot of interesting history in between there, and I am generalizing, and I am trying to, I'm being a little bit reductionist. But Saxony, England was ruled by Saxons, who are descent, who are basically Germans, who became, who were previous, I don't remember exactly where they stood on, like, the Saxons to Ton line. I don't remember. Anyway. But if you ever listen to Old English, it sounds like German. You can thank the Saxons for that. Now, when, uh, whenever the Normans came in, uh, Normans were, there were, uh, were the ancestors of, modern, of the modern-day French. And so the, Nor the Norman invasion, came, the Norman invasion happened, Saxony, Saxony, England was taken over, and people might think, oh, what do, what do you think of, what do you think of when you think of English legend, you know, English uh, English mythology. Probably think of King Arthur, right? That wasn't a Sa that wasn't a Saxony England invention. That was a Norman England invention. And so Tolkien, being a professor of ancient languages such as Saxon English, so this is Old English, which again is prim was primarily spoken by the by the Saxons, descended from Saxony, Ger what we now know as Germany. He lamented the fact that there were there was no mythology for modern England, especially Saxony England, because most of it was French. And he was a patriot. He was a man who loved his country, loved his culture, loved everything it stood for. And as a veteran of the Battle of the Somme and World War One, the most, probably the bloodiest and most decisive battles of the war, serve with distinction. You don't I mean, seriously. You don't serve at the Somme unless you don't serve at the Somme unless you're unless you're a badass. And he definitely was. This man, must we forget, y'all, World War I was truly a worldwide war. I don't need, in, 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 uh, international war, I should say. It featured people of all races and colors and creeds fighting together on, di granted, different sides of the, different sides of the, of, of the, of the Maginot Line. But, Tolkien would have been exposed to people, to, in, to Indian soldiers, would have been, uh, to Senegalese soldiers, Africans, uh, French um, oh gosh, what else? There, there are a couple of there are a couple of black divisions that, uh, from French co from uh, French colonies or French Commonwealth, <clears throat> not Commonwealth, but anyway. But Tolkien would have been exposed to a very diverse group of people, especially during the trenches in World War One. And here's what's crazy about it: people don't re realize that people don't <clears throat> because we we are so myopic in our understanding of history. Basically, history begins and ends with World War Two. I don't know why. But we forget, we forget history here. We forget of the realities of what these people were suffering and what these and people like Tolkien, what, his, who, what experience he was draw, drawing from. Now again, Tolkien had a very singular vision when it came to the Lord of the Rings. Again, as I said, to write, to write a definitive mythology for England. And he did so. Now, I hate to break it to you, but he did so with white Europeans in mind for his characters. You don't believe me? Look at the hobbits. The hobbits are inspired by country by countryside dwellers in England. Even the way that even the way that Samwise Gamgee talks sometimes is very much uh, is very like uh, very much a kind of typical of of a of a baseline educated day labor type person. Very much um, very country bumpkin kind of way, and. That was that was pretty much the entire population of the Shire. That was pretty much the entire inspiration for the Shire is country people who lived out in the, who lived out in who kind of lived out in the boonies and farmed and and uh, were their their basic and their uh, their entire livelihood revolved around agriculture. Again, there's nothing wrong with that because Tolkien was drawing from what he knew. And when and I'm convinced, and I know some idiots out there are going to try to tell me. Well, Sam was described as having as having brown hands in the uh, in Return of the King. It's like, yeah, he was. But you also remember that Sam was a gardener who spent all of his time outside, and Frodo was, most definitely was not. He was hobbit nobility, really. If you if you if 
to break it down. He had no reason to go out to be outside and work all the time. Sam was his gardener. Of course Sam has brown hands. And I don't think that Tolkien meant to I don't think that Tolkien had in mind for him to look like Anthony freaking Mackie. <clears throat> and unfortunately, we live in a world that does not recognize the realities of ethnicity and skin color. Because let's be honest, guys, there is no, there is no, there are, there's only one race. It's the human race. With fantasy stories like Tolkien, there are multiple races because they're are all sentient. You have elves, dwarves, halflings, men. They are all of different races because they are not all the same genetic makeup. Arrow Ulubit, the way Tolkien wrote it, Arrow Ulubitar did not make them equal, but he made them different in all of their respective ways. And they gave all of them a different, a, a, a certain type of soul that would allow them to live out their, in, to live out their intended purpose. And it's great because Tolkien figured that out. And he thought about things. Probably more than most of you have ever thought about any decision in your, in your life. Tolkien made this his life's work. And he did it well. He made it into something that has endured, has stood the test of time for the better part of a century. And as a result, the decisions that he that we that he has made, we can easily see why he why he made the decisions that he did in his stories. Now we can't know everything that was in that was in the man's mind, and I'm sure he may have had some he may have had some racist moments in his life. I don't know, but I don't think it was. A, but it wouldn't. But here's the thing: we know him well enough to know it wouldn't have been a deficiency in his of his character. It would have been more. It would have been more revolving around the times that he was living in. Because Tolkien, for all intents and purposes, was still a good man. And for us to be able to, for us to sit here in judgment in our stupid modern world and say, well, the only reason he made, the only reason he wrote Lord of the Rings is for everybody. Just, he had just white people in mind for Lord of the Rings, so he must have been racist. No. Wizards of the Coast, you're full of it, because that's exactly what you're saying. Because Wizards of the Coast decided to ignore ethnicity completely, and again, still make Ao in black, but keep her, keep her straw-colored hair. Um, yeah, how does that work? Because I don't know a single black person, I don't know a single black lady, black man, who has blonde hair. At least the way that's not dyed. Now, of course, there can be some. You can have, when, uh, as people get older, you have light, as, as black people get older, they're just with everybody. Your hair starts to get lighter, your hair starts to gray out. Maybe at least a, a white-haired Galadriel makes sense, but again, that's not how that works either, because Galadriel does not have white hair. She has beautiful golden blonde hair. But the Wizards of the Coast decided to make her look like Storm in their car. And not to mention, the, the car that they had that represented Andrew Flame of the West looked like a sword that was plucked off of He-Man. It looked like He-Man's sword. Like, this looks so stupid, because it, at least take inspiration... From the, from the Lord of the Rings films that treated it like a documentary, these people were dressed in actual medieval, not actual, but you know what I mean, in medieval inspire, inspired garb that was beautiful and practical. What, all of this, is, it's a costume, and it's clear that it's just a costume. The artwork is pretty cool. Again, Magic the Gathering is nothing, is nothing if not skillful with its artwork. But watching these people co-opt the good professor's work to suit their own diversity, equity, and inclusion quotas is absolutely sickening because they're not doing it at, they're not doing it out of love for Tolkien. They're doing it because they hate the fact that a property exists that's all about white people, specifically for white people. Now let me be very, very clear here, because I know some people are gonna try to take this as to be as to be racist or whatever. If you are black and you love the Lord of the Rings, it's okay. You are more than welcome. If you love what we love too, then join us. We don't care about your skin color. The only thing we care about is you trying to come in and fundamentally change this. Now, I don't think a single black person was involved in this decision at all. I think it was a bunch of woke, a bunch, I think it was a bunch of woke, white, blue-haired, land whale feminists who were trying so hard to earn their diversity quota for the day that they didn't realize who they pissed off. Now, I get that this, this was under development for a while, but remember Wizards of the Coast. We, the Tolkien fandom, beat out a billion dollar company. Amazon made Rings of Power and almost nobody watched it. 37% completion rate. And I guarantee you half of those were YouTubers like myself watching it to review it and take a big dump on it. The, the, this show is tanking Amazon Video. The, seriously, they just canceled The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. 
an, uh, a, a Tony, what, Tony? I don't even know. An award-winning show. I know that. An award-winning show. In order to spend money on a show that nobody watched. Y'all are dumb, Wizards of the Coast. If you think that we're going to just sit here and take this lying down, no. We beat Amazon. We're not afraid of you. But let's be clear, guys. Razor Fist said many, many times, it's not go, it's not get broke. No, it's not, it's not go woke, get broke. It's go broke, get woke. These kind of desperate attempts to appeal to the fictional modern audience is only to signal to your peers and to the people by you that you are ripe for acquisition. So no matter what Wizards of the Coast says, no matter what point that they try to make with you being a racist, just know this isn't, these aren't the actions of a um, healthy company. These aren't the actions of a company who is certain of where its next meal is coming from. Because they've already pissed off the fans so badly with their Dungeons and Dragons BS. And Dungeons and Dragons right now is nothing more than an IP farm for them. Because who's playing D&D? I used to play, but I would not play, I would not pick up a book now. Because no one's going to be buying the new books. Because it's gonna, it's gonna throw out, it's gonna negate every, all the other previous books they had that had that made inconveniently mentions of slavery and race. Hmm. Kind of funny when you decide to piss off your fans so badly. It's kind of amazing how how fast the bill comes due. But not, but as if as if just to add insult to injury, DreamWorks just came out and announced a uh, How to Train Your Dragon live action live action adaptation. Okay, no. A, we didn't need that because the originals were already so good, and B, we knew exactly what's gonna what was gonna happen, in that they cast Nico Parker as Astrid. In case you don't know who Nico Parker is, she's decidedly not Nordic in any way. She is definitely black because she is Tan she's uh, Tandy Newton's daughter. If you don't know who Tandy Newton is, watch Westworld or Mission Impossible 2, or just don't watch Mission Impossible 2, just watch the first season of Westworld. She's decidedly not looking like Astrid. She does not look Nordic at all. She is, she has, you know, puffy, typical uh, black people hair, I guess you could call it. And it's very, it's, it's very, it's very beautiful. Like, Nico Parker is a very, is a very pretty girl, sure. But Astrid, she is not. Astrid, she is not. The pale face, blonde hair, straight blonde, like, straight blonde hair. Blue-eyed Viking heroine. Because lest we forget, guys, How to Train a Dragon takes place with Vikings as the heroes. And Hiccup looks no better, because Hiccup looks like yet another, looks like uh, Peter Pan, for God's sake. It's just ridiculous watching all this take place, because we know exactly why they're doing it. Because they're not doing this out of loyalty to the, to the source material. They're doing this in order to hang on to the IP. In order to adapt it for a fictional modern audience that does not exist and that will reject this wholeheartedly. Unfortunately, this is the world that we live in. And I saw a uh, really hilarious quote from, by the way, a black man. If I can find the, qu if I can find the video, I will, uh, I'll, link, I'll try to link it below. But he had all sorts of things to say about the casting of Astrid. And I think this applies as well to, to uh, Wizards of the Coast's pathetic attempts at race swapping the entire Lord of the Rings. And he said, and he said, quit, uh, quit propagating, quit propagating white culture because you're black and you feel invincible. Or something like that. And again, if I can find it, but it was, it, that was basically the sentiment. I was like, whoa. And again, this is a guy, this coming from an actual black guy. Man, <laughs> it was great because how how perfect is that? The only reason they're doing this is because they feel like they can. They feel like they can get away with it. And it makes me very sad because, seriously, guys, people would have a conniption fit if Ryan Gosling suddenly decided to play Anansi the Spider. And I will keep referencing that because, seriously, some of the stories around, Anon around uh, Anansi and, the, and African folklore are pretty cool. It's some pretty cool stuff. I grew up on them watching Reading Rainbow. I read many of them. I read many of the books that LeVar Burton recommended. Because I loved hearing it. I loved hearing it. I don't know why. African folklore just stuck just stuck with me. It was fun. It was, it's interesting stuff. But unfortunately, y'all, 
there's let's just let's just reiterate if Tolkien had wanted his story to center around people with a different skin color that you wouldn't ordinarily find in England he would have written it that way he would have written it that way because he's an intelligent person who knows what the hell he's doing you can't always get what you want and listen if your enjoyment of a literary classic and I again I will completely 100% be on board with the title of Lord of the Rings being, an being one of the greatest works of English literature this century I don't think anyone would argue with that but listen it does not feature a whole lot of black characters it doesn't and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that y'all it's ridiculous that we're even having to make these distinctions and I hate that I'm having to have to constantly cover my own butt to try to make me seem to try to make me seem or literally everyone like me trying to make me on immediately on the fence of saying well I'm not racist like guys I'm not racist and no one who's making and no one who's trying to protect Tolkien's legacy is either who actually is the racist the people making these changes because they don't see legitimate legi legitimacy in black characters or in black stories black IPs they have they have no concept of properly adapting these stories they only want to cash in on a sure thing and as Eric July another very successful black man who is uh, overseeing the expansion of a new comic empire has said they only see legitimacy in white characters because it's the soft bigotry of low expectations because if they really believed if they really believed in diversity equity inclusion if they really believed in anti in anti-racism whatever bills you're spewing out today to sell their crappy product they would make stories they would make products that reference stories from cultures that it actually from cultures that actually make sense to have diversity in how cool would it be how cool would it be for magic the gathering to adapt some african folk tales hmm? but it's also interesting you never see an asian aragorn you didn't see a latino um, or sorry, Latina, Eowyn, or, uh, Pac or uh, Pakistani Galadriel, because the door only ever swings one way. It's just straight up racism, y'all. The door only ever swings one way, and they'd have a conniption if you reversed, the, if you reversed, did a little Uno reverse card on them. That's that's unfortunately the sick, twisted reality that we, that we live in. And I'm sorry, y'all. You need to disavow yourself of the notion that they care about you, that they give a damn about your stories, that they give a damn about your skin color, your, that they actually want to see diversity. Nope, nope. They only want to virtue signal. They want to virtue signal and make it so, you, and turn people like me into the bad guy whenever we have objections. Because again, guys, as I said this before, Lord of the Rings means more to me than to any of these people. Any of these people who are making these stupid decisions. Lord of the Rings means more to me than Star Wars at this point. And it means that and it means a lot to me to a lot of different it means a lot to a lot of different people. And allowing these people to continually get away with this is ridiculous. And we do not have to put up with it. Absolutely not. So don't put up with it. Don't buy anything. Don't and don't get involved in stupid arguments on the internet. But do stuff, but do stuff that will actually show them <laughs> your contempt I don't know find a way there's more because there's so much more value in defending a man's vision than there is in trying to make it into something he never was because we have to acknowledge the, the reality y'all Tolkien was smart enough to include something if he wanted it in there and, the fact, and if he didn't want it in, it in there that's fine it's his property he can write he can write whatever he wants he's not writing Turner Diaries He's writing a mythology and writing stories with characters we can all identify with and all have identified with for the better part of a century. We don't, Wizards of the Coast, we don't need you. We have Tolkien stories. We have, his, we have Christopher's continuation of many of, of, many of his visions, of, an, of many of his creative visions. I just, I'm just in the middle of reading The Fall of Numenor. And man, does it describe people like you. So listen, guys, just don't, don't get involved in this. 
don't even don't even give them any don't even give them the time of day give them nothing take everything from them because that's okay because these people are evil these people are the enemies of good storytelling because the minute the minute that they're done with lord of the rings they'll, they'll move on to something else so never ever give them the time of day and don't budge an inch and don't even let do not let them do not let them label you with every terrible name in the book because as well because along with this age old along with this age old behavior towards established ips there's an age old insult that comes with them we all know what it is and they just go on and on and on but here's the thing they've used it so often it doesn't mean anything so not only are they pathetic enough to try this they're too they're they're too pathetic to understand that their insults and their labels mean nothing. And I think that's the real victory here. But anyway, y'all, have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. Go read some good token books. Bye.